Before Nicaea, the early followers of Prophet Jesus Part 5. Where does this leave us? And say, O Messenger, to these idolaters, Islam has come, the help which Allah promised has come true, and idolatry and disbelief has gone. Surely, falsehood is going and will disappear, unable to remain in the face of truth. Surah 17 Al-Isra, 81 1. Does the Quran have the same problems? As we have seen, the Bible suffers from a number of problems. Therefore, being honest and fair, we should also apply similar research criteria in evaluating the authenticity of the Quran. In other words, we will discover what has been written about it and the manuscript evidence of the Quran. However, where we relied upon Christian sources in order to understand the problems of the Bible, we will not rely primarily on Muslim sources to view the Quran as we might then be accused of bias. Nevertheless, we shall quote studies by Muslims and the research of non-Muslim evidence in favor of the Quran and its authenticity. To avoid any bias we shall look at what the majority of non-Muslim scholars have said about the Quran and its authenticity. Firstly, however, let us get a brief history of the Quran and some of the charges that have been made against it. The Quran was recited by the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, being illiterate himself, used scribes to write down the verses of the Quran on cloth, stones, saddles, date palm leaves etc. to aid people's memorization of it. Al-Bukhari mentions the following, when it was revealed. Not equal are those believers who sit at home and those that strive in the cause of Allah and Nisa, 95. The Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, said, Call Zayd ibn the bit for me, and tell him to bring the ink pot and the scapula bone, i.e. paper and pen. When Zayd came, the Prophet told him, Write, not equal are those believers who sit at home and those, to the end of verse. The parchments on which the Quran was written were so common that Zayd ibn the bit reported, during the lifetime of the Prophet, we used to compile the Quran from scraps of cloth. Al-Hakim These written verses were sometimes given to visiting tribes who would take them away to learn. After the death of the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Many of the Hafid, those who had memorized the whole of the Quran, were killed at the Battle of Yamama against the apostates. Umar ibn al-Khattab, radi alayhu umbu, who was the second rightly guided caliph suggested to the first caliph. Abu Bakr asked Sadiq that they should gather the whole Quran into one written book to keep it safe from being lost. Zayd ibn the Abit, radi Allah anhu, who was one of the main scribes, took the task of writing down the Quran. Zayd referred to all those who had memorized the Quran and those who had written copies, verifying them with other witnesses. The other companions of the Prophet who helped Zayd to write down and compile the Quran were the four caliphs themselves as well as Ubay ibn Qab, Abdullah ibn Masud, Mu'ad ibn Jabal. Abu Musa al Asharse, Mu'awiyah ibn Abi Safayan, Akbah ibn Amir, Abdullah bin Arkham, Khalid bin Sa'idi and others, may Allah be pleased with them. The Prophet's allowance that the Quran could be recited in seven different Arabic dialects, which is the way the Quran had been revealed, later led to some dissension. Thus Uthman, after consultation with other companions, united the Muslims under one reading which was the Quraysh that the Prophet himself had used. Copies of this Quran were sent to the various parts of the Islamic Empire to be used as standard, and all other dialects of reading and writing were ordered to be destroyed. For more on this see, Abu Amar Yasser Qad, An Introduction as the Sciences of the Quran, Birmingham Al Hadaya, 1420 AH 1999 CE, pp 135-139. It should be noted that these books were not burned due to their content, as is sometimes claimed by the Christian missionaries. But rather because people were reciting the Quran in different dialects with slightly different meanings and understandings. Unqualified Christian evangelists sometimes mention the burning of the texts in order to prove that the Quran has suffered from the same changes as the Bible. The Quran is read by Muslims every day in their prayers and it is the practice of some Muslims to read the entire Quran in three days, some in a week and many in a month. While it is very easy to memorize, the Quran itself mentions that it is easy to memorize. In many mosques you will find children as young as six that have memorized the whole Quran, or a large section of it, in the pure Arabic language. Comparatively, this is not found in any other creed, belief, religion, tradition, ideology or theory in the world. No other follower of any other way can match this memorization which is itself a stunning miracle and proof of the divine origin of the Quran. No other way of life has children or adults who know their books off by heart.
The Quran is considered to be the word of God and is thus given the utmost respect and attention that it deserves, it is not to be compared to mere poetry, myths or stories. The total agreement throughout the vast Muslim empire upon one standard text of the Quran is one of the strongest arguments for the Quran's authenticity. Clearly establishing that it must have been agreed upon from the earliest times. Furthermore, there is next to nothing recorded in history which mention any arguments amongst the Muslims about the Quran and its text. The fact that all the different sects of that arose during the earliest period of Islam, such as the Rafida Shi'ab, the Khawarij, the Qadariyya, the Jamiyyah, the Jabriya, the Murjiyab, the Mutazila etc. never mentioned in their writings that the Quran was drastically changed. Neither did they come with their own copies of the Quran in order to justify their political or theological viewpoints. This all gives extra weight to the trustworthy nature of the Quran. All of these sects had to quote from the Quran in order to argue their claims, and none of these deviant sects ever claimed that the Quran was inauthentic. The fact that these sects were unable to invent or add a single verse to the Quran proves that the Muslims were unanimously united upon a single text of the Quran from the earliest periods of Islamic history. The idea that the Quran has been changed has only emerged during the modern era. Heretical sect of Shia for example have claimed that the Quran was changed by the Sahaba. A Shia writer called At-Taburi wrote Farl al-Khattab in which he compiled the quotes of modern Shia scholars who had claimed that the Quran has been changed. Also the non-Muslim sect of the Ahmad Qadinis, the sect founded by the Indian heretic and non-Muslim Ghulam Ahmad in the 19th century, also have their own Quran in which they have twisted verses of the Quran due to their ignorance of the Arabic language. 2. Manuscript Evidence of the Quran the first point to note is that the absence of manuscripts does not prove that the Quran in the hands of the Muslims is not the Quran that was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad. Secondly, the existence of early documentary evidence does not actually prove that these were the words spoken or received by Muhammad, or indeed any other historical character. Although this is something that the Western historian would like, or demand, it is in fact not necessarily that reliable. The Muslims of the earliest generations, including that of the Prophet, indeed the Prophet Muhammad himself, considered writing as a useful tool, both of preservation and reference. But it has never been accepted as sufficient in and of itself. An example of this is when Umar ibn al-Khattab was approached by some of the Jews from Kabar claiming that they had a document from the Prophet Muhammad guaranteeing their right to stay. Umar rejected it, claiming it to be a fake on the basis that it contradicted what was orally transmitted from the Prophet himself on the issue. This highlights three issues of benefit to this discussion. First, the possibility of forgery of a document. Secondly, the benefit and need for a sound chain of oral transmission and thirdly that hostile parties certainly do not formulate a more reliable source of information. Three, early Quranic manuscripts in our possession. Most of the early original Quran manuscripts with us now date from after the 2nd century. There are however a number of odd fragments of Quranic papyri which date from the 1st century as mentioned in Dai Ents Tunda Quran. There is also a complete Quran in the Egyptian National Library on parchment made from gazelle skin which has been dated 68 AH. This copy has also been mentioned by von Denfer. Ahmed von Denier, Ulam al Quran, Islamic Foundation, 1983. Narrations differ as to how many copies were directly ordered and sent out by the Caliph Uthman, but they range from four to seven. It seems certain from various Muslim historical sources that several were lost, through fire amongst other things. There are four copies that are attributed to Uthman. The Tashkent Manuscript It seems that the copy in Tashkent also known as the Samarkand Manuscript may be the same copy of the Quran which Uthman kept for himself and was killed while reading it. A book entitled Tariq al-Mushaf al-Uthman fi Tashkent by Makdun gives a number of reasons for the authenticity of the manuscript. 1. The Muse BAF is written in a script used in the first 50 years of Hydra. 2. It is written on parchment made from gazelle. 3. There are no diacritical marks which is indicative of early manuscripts. 4. It does not have the voweling marks which were introduced by Abu al aswad ad duals who died in 68 AH, suggesting that it is earlier than this. Abdurrahman Lomax has noted in his Authenticity of the Quran that the parchment leaves of the Tashkent Quran were judged by Shabunin. A Russian scholar whose report on the Tashkent manuscript formed the base of Isaac Mendelssohn's report on the same test called the Columbia University copy of the Samarkand Ka Quran, the Muslim. 
World in Four Christian Quarterly, Vel.30, 1940. To have been written not later than at the beginning of the 2nd century AH. So even if it this manuscript is not one of the Uthmanic Qurans it is still very early indeed. Objections to the Tashkent document concerning the presence of illuminations between the Surabs may be addressed, not necessarily meaning that it is not the Uthmanic manuscript. It is possible that the medallions were used from an early time, or that they were added at a later date. Similarly, the irregularity of the codex also suggests two possibilities. Firstly, as suggested by Lomax, the manuscripts may have been repaired as the pages disintegrated. The second possibility is that the document was originally written by several different scribes. The difference between the Samarkand and Tashkent manuscripts in terms of the number of lines per page etc. are not arguments that in any way disprove the early dating of these manuscripts or their attribution to the scribes working under Zayd bin the Abit. The Qufic script Many of the Christian missionaries and evangelists assert that the Quran is not in Qufic script, therefore a concise analysis of this claim is necessary. The Uthmanic Qurans were written in this script and it is almost incomprehensible to modern-day Arabic readers. The script was written without hamzas, nukwat, dots, or tashkil, vowel marks. This was the manner of writing at that time. Therefore, a straight line could represent the letter ha, taa, the or ya. It was only by context that the appropriate letters and vowels could be differentiated. The Arabs at that time were accustomed to such a script and would thus substitute the appropriate letter and vowel depending on the context. An Introduction to the Sciences of the Quran, page 141 A Muslim scholar, al Kalkashandi, maintains that Qufic script is said to have been the earliest script from which the other scripts developed. He writes, the Arabic script, Qat, is the one which is now known as Qufic. From it evolved all the present pens. Kitab al Shah, Volume 3, Page 15 The terms that came to be applied to these scripts by the Karli Arabs could not have the chronological significance that some later Arabs and most Western writers have put to them. For is it the case that the name of a thing, i.e. Qufic, necessarily indicates its ultimate origin? The fact is that the script which later came to be known as Qufic has its origin far earlier than the founding of the city of Kufa. Atik Siddiqui writes, the Qufic or angular variety of the Arabic script has been traced about a hundred years before the foundation of the town Kufa, 638 C-17H, to which place the style owes its name. The Story of Islamic Calligraphy, page 9 That is to say, the city was founded in 17 AH and the Qufic style originated a hundred years before that time. Importantly, this disagrees with many of the Christian missionary theories such as that of Joseph J. Smith. This conclusion is agreed upon by other writers, we read in the splendor of Islamic calligraphy. However, the Qufic script cannot have originated in Kufa, since that city was founded in 17 AH 638 CE and the Qufic script is known to have existed before that date. Sijilanasi and Katibi, page 97 the arbitrary dating of the origins of this script by those who attempt to disregard Islamic documentary evidence also contradicts early coin and rock inscriptions which have been commented upon by Western writers. Regarding the tombstone of Abdurrahman Ibn Kher al-Hajari, 31 A.H. Nabiya Abbott writes. The earliest inscription, the tombstone of Abdurrahman Ibn Kher al-Hajari dated 31 652, it is certainly not Makkan and can safely be considered as poor Qufik. Abbott, Rise and Development, page 19. Welch dates a milestone as pre-93 AH from the time of the Caliph Abdul Malik, who reigned from 685 to 705 CE, written in Qufic script. Welch, Calligraphy in the Arts of the Muslim World, page 44. An Amayyad coin, minted in Damascus, inscribed in early Qufic script, is dated at 107 AH. Its inscription reads, There is none worthy of worship but Allah, he is one and has no partner. Another Umayyad coin, minted in Wazit, Iraq, inscribed in the early Qufic script is dated at 108 AH, as can be seen in room 34 of the British Museum. The inscription reads, There is none worthy of worship but Allah, he is one and has no partner. British Museum, room 34. The Top Copy Manuscript
Concerning the top copy manuscript there is an interesting clause in the Treaty of Versailles, Article 246. Within six months from the coming into force of the present treaty, Germany will restore to His Majesty King of Hijaz, the original Quran of Caliph Uthman. It is suggested that this manuscript is dated just after the first century after Hydra. Dr. Muhammad Shabani considered it as Uthmanic, Muhammad Hamidullah also agreed. The Islamic Museum of Istanbul This does not seem to be an original Uthmanic manuscript, but the oldest copy from the original. It is written in Maki script and can almost certainly be dated to before the end of the first Islamic century. Husayn Mosque in Cairo This is the oldest of all manuscripts, and is either original or an exact copy from the original with similarity to the Madani script. It is attributed to Ali ibn Abi Talib and is written in early Qufic script which Ali would have used and may even be Ali's own handwriting, Allah knows best. Other Quranic Manuscripts There are also other Qurans attributed to Ali, Ibn Nadim ad Ibn Ayn Aba claimed that Ali wrote three Qurans of which there is one in Dar al Qut, Najaf. It has written on it, Ali ibn Abi Talib wrote it in the year 40 AH. There are Quranic manuscripts attributed to Hajjaj ibn Muawiyah dated 49 AH and Uqba ibn Amir dated 52 AH in Turkey. More information on this topic can be found in Tariq al Katim al Arabi or Dr. Salahuddin al Munajid. It is also worth noting that there is no deviation in these manuscripts from the Quran in our possession today. The Institute für Korinforschung, University of Munich, Germany, had collected and collated some 42,000 complete or incomplete copies of the Quran, gathered from all over the world. After some 50 years of study they reported that in terms of differences between the various copies there were no variants, except occasional mistakes of copyists which could easily be ascertained. The institute was destroyed by American bombs during the Second World War. 4. What do non-Muslim scholars say about the Quran? We would like to mention what recognized non-Muslim scholars of Islam have said about the Quran. These are scholars who are not of the same ilk as the radical fringe minority of demythologizer orientalists. A brief examination into a few statements from some of these writers would be indicative of the dominant opinion on the issue and of its divine nature. A. Adrian Brockett Dash, the transmission of the Quran after the death of Muhammad was essentially static, rather than organic. There was a single text, and nothing significant, not even allegedly abrogate material, could be taken out nor could anything be put in. This applied even to the early caliphs. The efforts of those scholars who attempt to reconstruct any other hypothetical original versions of the written text are therefore shown to be disregarding half the essence of Muslim scripture. Approaches to the History of the Interpretation of the Quran, page 44. B. Arthur J. Arbery Dash, apart from certain orthological modifications of the originally somewhat primitive method of writing, intended to render unambiguous and easy the task of reading and recitation. The Quran as printed in the 20th century is identical with the Quran as authorized by Uthman more than 1300 years ago. From his introduction to his translation of the Quran. C. John B. Taylor, thus we feel confident that the Quran which we have today is, as far as is humanly possible, the text which was established within a few years of the Prophet's death. Thinking about Islam. D. Harry Gaylord Dorman Dash, it is a literal revelation of God, dictated to Muhammad by Gabriel, perfect in every letter. It is an ever-present miracle witnessing to itself and to Muhammad, the Prophet of God. Its miraculous quality resides partly in style, so perfect and lofty that neither men nor jinn could produce a single chapter to compare with its briefest chapter. And partly in its content of teachings, prophecies of the future, and amazingly accurate information such as the illiterate Muhammad could never have gathered of his own accord. Towards Understanding Islam, New York, 1948, page 3. E. Laura Vecchia Valieri, on the whole we find in it a collection of wisdom which can be adopted by the most intelligent of men. The greatest of philosophers and the most skillful of politicians, but there is another proof of the divinity of the Quran. It is the fact that it has been preserved intact through the ages since the time of its revelation till the present day. Read and reread by the Muslim world. This book does not rouse in the faithful any weariness, it rather, through repetition, is more loved every day. It gives rise to a profound feeling of awe and respect in the one who reads it or listens to it. Apology to El Islamism, pages 57-59. F. J. R. Gibb, well then, if the Quran were his own, Muhammad's, composition other men could rival it. Let them produce ten verses like it.
If they could not, and it is obvious that they could not, then let them accept the Quran as an outstanding evidential miracle. Mohammedanism, OUP, page 42. G. G. Amardaliath- The Quran admittedly occupies an important position among the great religious books of the world. Though the youngest of the epic-making works belonging to this class of literature, it yields to hardly any in the wonderful effect which it has produced on large masses of men. It has created an all-but-new phase of human thought and a fresh type of character. It first transformed a number of heterogeneous desert tribes of the Arabian Peninsula into a nation of heroes. and then proceeded to create the vast politico-religious organizations of the Mohammedan world which are one of the great forces with which Europe and the East have to reckon today. J.M. Rodwell. The Coleman, 1977, 5. H. Dr. Steingass, a work, then, which calls forth so powerful and seemingly incompatible emotions even to the distant reader, distant as to time and still more so as a mental development, a work which not only conquers the repugnance which he may begin its perusal but changes this adverse feeling into astonishment and admiration. Such a work must be a wonderful production of the human mind indeed and a problem of the highest interest to every thoughtful observer of the destinies of mankind. Here, therefore, its merits as a literary production should perhaps not be measured by some preconceived maxims of subjective and aesthetic taste, but by the effects which it produced in Muhammad's contemporaries and fellow countrymen. If it spoke so powerfully and convincingly to the hearts of his hearers as to weld hitherto centrifugal and antagonistic elements into one compact and well-organized body, animated by ideas far beyond those which had until now ruled the Arabian mind, then its eloquence was perfect, simply because it created a civilized nation out of savage tribes, and shot a fresh wolf into the old warp of history. T. P. Hughes, Dictionary of Islam, pp. 526-528. I, Arthur J. Arbery Dash, in making the present attempt to improve on the performance of my predecessors, and to produce something which might be accepted as echoing however faintly the sublime rhetoric of the Arabic Quran. I have been at pains to study the intricate and richly varied rhythms which, apart from the message itself constitute the Quran's undeniable claim to rank amongst the greatest literary masterpieces. Of mankind this very characteristic feature Dash, that inimitable symphony, as the believing Pickthal described his holy book the very sounds of which move men to tears and ecstasy, has been almost totally ignored by previous translators. It is therefore not surprising that what they have wrought sounds dull and flat indeed in comparison with the splendidly decorated original. The Quran Interpreted, OUP, 1964, P.X. Other scholars who correspond to this position about the Quran include Montgomery Watt, Muir, Gilliam, Glub and Parrott. Abdurrahim Green noted that, it is in the disregard of the legacies of these writers that have caused the divergence from the authoritative position by the present radical demythologizer writers, such as Patricia Crone, Michael Cook, Wandsboro, Andrew Rippon et al., and have led to the unanimous rejection of their theories by more balanced critics. Abdurrahim Green, An Authoritative Exposition, Part 2, D, The Example of the Uninformed, Quran Version Beta, Smith and the Quran, Manuscript Evidence. 